A group of psychologists in North Carolina had an idea that they hoped might solve the problem. Oh, this is a young lady who is a teacher now. She's a teacher in Charlotte. Joe Sparling and his team wanted to reach children far younger than had ever been done before. We had a great optimism in the early 70s that we could really make a difference in kids' lives and that early education was maybe the way to do that. The team went out into deprived neighborhoods and handpicked 111 newborn babies for a unique experiment. They called it the Abyssidarian Project. Kay Gattis was a teenager living in poverty when she got pregnant. I was 16 years old, having a child. Didn't know anything about having a child. Yeah, I got a baby picture of him somewhere in here. Here you go. That's him. <laughs> Without intervention, Kay's son, Miche, would have been well behind his more privileged peers by the time he started school. Once you are behind in school, and once you begin to be labeled as someone who is slow or someone who, who can't quite do it, people begin to treat you differently. And they lower their expectations for you. And as that occurs, you see kids begin to have the light go out of their eyes. Sometimes my Craig Ramey and his team believed they could break this vicious circle with science. Miche joined the project when he was six weeks old, and Joe Sparling would make sure that his brain was kept busy. The researchers had distilled the latest scientific theories on child development into 200 learning games. You put one in. You put a blue ball in. <gasps> oh, you got it out. Look at this. However simple, this. each game had a hidden agenda. You don't like those all together? One of the important principles of teaching is follow the child's lead, because if the child is into something, that's something they're ready to learn. See mine? Can you get one like mine? It's not a matter of just throwing stuff at the kid. You got it. You basically say, what is this child likely to be comfortable doing right now? What has he got the capabilities for? And then you do something that stretches him just a little. All right, looks good. But it wasn't all fun and games for the children. The scientists needed to know whether anything was happening in their stimulated brains. Okay, now you do it. It's fair to say that these children have had more data collected about them than probably any other group of children on Earth. The children took regular IQ tests, and their scores were compared to kids who had not received any special treatment. We didn't see any differences at three months of age. We didn't see any differences at six, none at nine, none at 12. At 15 months of age, the way that the children literally saw the world began to be different. The stimulated children were learning faster, spoke more fluently, and had better IQ scores than their peers. By two years of age, the differences between the two groups were dramatic. And by three years of age, we knew that we had to get to kids long before three. At the age of five, the children were released into the school system. But wherever they went, they always came back to be tested. And that's when the real surprise hit. They had kept their IQ advantage, achieved higher qualifications, and gained better jobs solid proof that early stimulation did have a lasting effect on their lives. We were over the moon. This was meaningful. IQs were never the objective, but they were a way to measure that something was happening, something, something was going on in there, and that translates into school achievement, into later life achievement. Miche Gattis is one of many success stories. Very proud of him. I'm proud of all my kids, but he, he's like teaching me in my life now. Miche got a college degree and now works in New York. <laughs> Early intervention had not just boosted the IQ of the children, it had taught them the rules of the learning game. Some of my friends 
they call me smart boy, a nerdy boy, this, that, you know. No, I'm not, you know, I'm just like you. I just like the mind. Everything goes back to early learning, earlier education. It really does. I mean, I don't care what most people will say, you know, wait till you get into public school, what have you. No, it starts way earlier than that. Um, and I think had not had that, who knows where I would have been. 35 years after the study began, the results are crystal clear. For the brain, there is no such thing as too early.